you, we, 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 we needed to access, uh, you know, journal articles, for example, for, you know, for secondary, for secondary uh, data. And so, and then when I went in, when I started, you know, looking at all this, I, I noticed a lot, a lot of information that is really gathering uh, digital dust, you know, in the journals, but also in the libraries. And I noticed that academicians are, diff, are, are simply communicating to themselves. They are preaching to the converted. We who want to use these te texts to enhance our, our, our PhD projects and also academic work. But I also discovered that uh, what the academicians discover or invent or uh, reveal through their studies or, or their findings, I should say, um, are actually meant to be consumed by the societies, by the society, by the policy makers, by the different um, different uh, uh, stakeholders, just not simply uh, academicians themselves, but also the society at large. So if we are talking about research for development, research that is supposed to spur social economic transformation within our societies, then the people are supposed to consume these products may not necessarily be academicians, they may be our ordinary people in the parks, our ordinary people on the streets, in the business world, in the medical field, our patients, everyone. And so, so I came up with this idea, uh, which is called Research Finds News, and we publish on researchfindsug.com. You may want to use your phones to start in scrolling through and see what we are doing. So research findings meaning that the findings can become news. So we are trying to take findings into the news realm, to try and step them down into easy to read stories. So what we do is that we try to simplify the language, the jargon, the scientific jargon that is found in your journal articles and, and, and thesis to turn them into stories that any ordinary person can read and understand. And the idea is that uh, uh, we would be able to, 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 to link research and industry. So we are a non-profit research translation project from Uganda. And our mode of translation is simply stories or news stories or newsification for that matter. I, we, we believe we are the first of its kind here in, in Uganda. Maybe not in Africa. I was thinking probably there's nothing like this in Africa, but recently I landed on something similar happening in Tanzania around the same time as, my, as mine, but they are doing it in Swahili and they are mostly doing policy papers and policy briefs and not stories, but probably they will get there. So we, we mix academic rigor with the journalistic flair. Academic rigor is understandable to all of you, but journalistic flair, it may not be understandable to all of you. That's what we use here in Uganda or in the media industry to try to make stories that are uh, interesting, that can be, uh, they are catchy for everybody to just get attracted and, and, and find out what exactly is inside of what we're talking about, because you know, Scientific research is such alien to every people, to ordinary people. So we, we use lots of jargon and people may not understand what we read except academicians or students like myself. So I want to find a way to ensure that uh, say a border border writer can understand research about the border border industry. That's what I'm trying to do. So let me into a conversation. If the media can meet academia, then we'll have a conversation and we take our research products beyond just uh, the academic uh, confines. And so we, we don't rely on what people say, say at, at, at political rallies, for example, because that's where I have been. I, I, I'm a co-founder of Red Pepper. 
for example. And, 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 and our stories are usually obtained from parliament where there's a lot of noise or, or the police station or at the campaign rally or a presidential address or maybe a, a street fight or a, or, a, or, a, or a demonstration. But now those, those are our sources. But this in this niche that where I have gone, our sources are your research reports, the academic books, published journal articles, policy papers, and we, we also try as much as possible to sit down researchers and interview them about their work. And also we profile them. If we are a research giant, we so that people can know you, so that people can know what exactly you're doing. So that people who cannot access journal articles or journals for that matter, like the journals, can know about your work in a simplified form. That's what we do. So when you look on the side of the screen, you will see uh, our philosophy and what we stand for. So what motivated us? Indeed, like I have said before, um, we, we, we noticed that researchers are speaking to themselves. They are preaching to the choir or to the converted, those of us who want to read about our, our work or our colleagues' work, we are already converted. We just want to enhance knowledge. That is fine. But knowledge, which is only academic. Now, at Research Finds, we want knowledge that is going to be consumed by everyone so that they can practice it or practicalize it or put it into practice or create products out of that knowledge. So, we discovered that lots of research was gathering digital dust, like I had said, in journals and bookshelves. We noticed that journalists don't know how to imprint research findings. I also didn't know until I became a PhD student. So we have a lot of capacity in the media industry of people who can interpret research, but they don't know how to do it. So there is a mismatch between research and industry. Yet, we are trying to build a knowledge economy to be able to improve our societies. But this knowledge economy needs evidential publishing. We need to write stories about the knowledge economy with evidence. And evidence can only come from research findings. For example, if you're talking about typical African farmers who do not know about Google Scholar, for example, how do we communicate to them? So the problem is that there is that poor communication between the researchers and these farmers, for example. If we talk about food security in Africa, for example. Uh, and then, of course, finally, the other motivation was that public servants or policy makers ha have a detest for, academ for academicians. They think academicians are theorists. They just write and put their things there, and that's it. So, you give them your policy, policy paper, they'll just put it there, they don't want to read it. Or if you give them your deposit, your, for example, assuming, like for me, I'm, 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 I'm investigating uh, print media, for example, if now I finish my thesis and then I deposit that the moment a new vision or red paper, they may not read it. Or at the Ministry of, of Information, they may not, not read it because they will think I'm just being theoretical. So, so this, so this is the test. The test for academicians is something that needs to be worked on by projects like this one. When they read simple stories, then they will know, oh, I can now go and look for Professor Rosaza, for example, or Professor Juliet here, and, 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 and see what exactly she's doing. Instead of a way of reading her thesis, which is very difficult to understand, the story about her thesis might lead me to a certain section within the thesis, and then I understand what she's trying to do. So if you look on the side again, uh, you see those stories from the monitor where universities are being urged to communicate better. Uh, somewhere the independent published uh, something to do with the, uh, with the president complaining about what PhDs are doing. So this is what motivated us. So how do we do it? We mine the latest journal articles on all sectors. When you see on the side, that top screen, uh, it, it, it invites you to send us a story. So when you go on our website, on the menu bar, you click on send us a story. 
there is a form to fill. It's electronic. It, 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 it assists you to, to, to simplify your research for us so that we go in. And once we've done that, we see the stories from your abstracts, from your objectives, from your methodology, from your findings, from your conclusion, and from your recommendations. And then what we do, we grant prominent recognition to you, the authors, by attaching the links. Once we've done the story and refined it, we attach the link to your published journal article. So that then when somebody has read your story, they can also still go ahead and visit your journal. Probably that can help you with so many clicks or citations, or maybe somebody gets in touch with you and, say, and says and suggests probably a product that can be uh, innovated out of your, of, your, of, your, of, of, your, of your research. So we step it down, we step all the jargon down, academic jargon down into easy to read news stories. We might even go ahead and interview you if we, if we are able to access you. We can interview you to tell us more about what you did. When you visit this website, you'll see some of you who, have, who I have reached out to. For example, Dr. Juliet here, I've reached out to Dr. Nagasha. I've reached out to, I think, uh, Dr. Wengabo and others whose works I have, I have uh, newsified. And at some, at some point, I've interviewed them directly. And they have given me very good feedback. For example, there's a story which I just did two days back about a researcher, Dr. Abaho, and at Nkumba University. She, 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 she did some work around the 2020 Bobby Wine protests and, 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 and made some recommendations for, for security on how to quell demonstrations and how to balance human security and state, and state security. It's now the most read article. In three days, it's the most read article on, on the site. And that tells you. But you see, her article came out probably like six months ago, and people have probably had not known about it, a journal article. So this is what we're talking about. So we go to the stereo, story generation bar and where we say, send, send your search findings or send us your story. Once you've filled in, in, in the form, there are simple questions. You click submit, it will come to us. And then our job is to use now the journalistic player to bring out your, your findings. And, uh, and then what we do, we now take your story all over social media, through our social media platforms, so that people can find you, can look for you. If you have a social media handle, for example, a, a Twitter handle, we will tag you, or we will tag your university, or we will tag your, 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 your institution. So that then everybody knows what we are doing. So I have been, because I'm doing it alone and a few people, so we can't reach out to every university, every institution, or every researcher. But we know using this form, people can reach, reach out to us and we help them. And then what we do most, which most journalists don't like doing, but for us, we do it because we are dealing with a sensitive area, which is academia, where we are talking about facts and figures. So before we publish this story, we share it with you, you the author, if we are able to see you or reach you. So that you, you also give us your input. Have we done it the, the way, that does, it, does the story reflect exactly what you found out or what your journal is about? So that then uh, we are at par, so that we do not tell lies, so that we do not uh, uh, distort facts as you found them out. Now, um, so how do we cook this food? So like we said, we identify the research topic, um, uh, you know, or product. And then we try to see, uh, uh, we try to see how best, uh, how best we, we, we fish out the story. For instance, if, like I'll be telling you later, if you were to now to be part of what I'm doing, you know, uh, this is what you need to do. You have, the first step will be for you to, to, to determine the potential news value out of your research and, and those who might be interested in it, in it. For example, I did a story recently about which Dr. Juliet has been doing with her team. Uh, in northern Uganda, where they're trying to work out something that will sort of, um, do you call it biomedical? Bio what? Resistance. Ant ant antibiotic resistance in the children. This is what they are doing. And, uh, and, 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 and so, so, so we, we're trying to, so, 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 so the point is that so the news value there, you know, becomes what 
this research is going to do to help people, to help children in Uganda, to help fight ant 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 antibiotic uh, resistance. And so, 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 so that kind of topic really interests us. We see the news value out of it. So we, number, we so our, the next step we go, we, we read the abstract, we read the instruction, I mean the introduction. We go into the main findings again, and we try to find out their significance because that's where we will pick the story. We also analyze that method, the method that you use it. We want to see whether uh, your, your, your methods really uh, were valid. And uh, we also pay attention to your sample size, your data collection methods, your statistical analysis that you use in your research to be able to, to, to communicate a story that everybody will know came out of a rigorous process and, and, that, and, and why we are using journalistic flair to put it together. This is how we begin to cook the food, sorry. And uh, step number four, we identify the main findings, like I had said before, and we consider how they might be relevant to current events or to broader issues. We look at their implications, especially for policy, and how they might impact the audience. Like, for example, this study which I talked about, which is the most read now on the site about the demonstrations in 2020, you know, these, these are relevant issues now in our political landscape. So we also look out for interesting details, our step number five. We look, we look out for interesting details. Now, assuming, like I've been sh showing you a few things on how you can even do it yourself, you realize that when you, when, when you look at your own studies, your own research, your own research findings, you'll be able to, to, dis to, 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 to pick out what you find to be most interesting amongst your findings the unique details, especially even of how the research was conducted, that can be unique to us. For example, did you meet resistance? Were you chased? Did the ordinary people chase you around and, 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 people, and, and you could not imagine what is happening to you? And, 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 and we won't pick that, that's very interesting. It might lead us into a, a window that opens us to your, into your research, which might be difficult to understand, but we have used an entry point, which is an interesting, part of the research that becomes the entry point to, to take us into what you've done. And, 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 and then we, we look at the insights that have emerged, we look at the details that are newsworthy, that, that we can put together into a story. And then that story leads us to your research, to your, to your, to your, to your, to your journal article, to your thesis, to your policy paper, for example, or your policy brief, what you'd like to call, to call it. Then step number six, we also look at the broader context. How is your research fitting into current trends, into current debates, into the issues in your field of study? And then this will help us to frame your, our product, our story in, in a way that is going to be relevant and compelling to our audience. Uh, of course, during this work, we, we encounter certain challenges. Maybe before I even go further, you will see this story on the, on, on the right-hand side. This is, a, uh, I think, uh, one of us uh, who happens to be a professor at, at UCU, where she did a study and her team about why Ugandans were ignoring the COVID-19 vaccine. She did some good work. I just landed on it. Actually, I picked it from, uh, from the NIMRA WhatsApp group. And I asked her, I went into her inbox, I said, can I newsify this? I said, yeah, please go ahead. Then I ask, give me your findings, whatever they are, just give, send me a few things. And, 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 and we did that story for her. And, and I think it really went very far. Uh, uh, but the, so, so the, so the challenges that we encounter while we are doing this at Research Finds News is that um, science reporting is boring. People want to hear about Bob Wine, about MK, about Museveni, about uh, Mavati, because those stories are not boring. But maybe if one of you or one of us did research about this Mabati, then uh, we would get more people reading about why, what causes people to steal from the poor, for example, and, and, and then we would make a contribution to policy. So, so, so but science is, the reporting is boring. And, and, and then in the country, we have a scarcity of science journalists. I am not a science journalist, but I'm trying to force myself to become one, uh, mainly because of my research work, because of my academic work. And undermining journals is tedious. 
you can imagine. I urgent. I have to read. On top of the, the, the articles I have to read for my own work, academic work, also I have to read your work. I have to read work that is, that is outside journalism, which is my field. I have to find myself reading about engineering, reading about medicine, reading about agriculture, reading about uh, gender, reading about political science. So it is very tedious and it's a challenge. Of course, this site is not generating any revenue. I told you it's, it's, non, it's a non, not for profit website. And, and it's because I've discovered that science communication is a sacrifice. It's going to be a sacrifice. If we want to transform this country within science communication, it has to be a sacrifice because now the buzzword is science and technology. The buzzword is STEM. I'm into STEM education field where I'm teaching children how to play with Legos and build robots. And, and, and I'm glad to announce that my our children on the program that I run, which is Young Engineers, are now living on Sunday for the United States to compete at the world stage in the World Robotics Championships. They are representing Uganda, and we've been doing it. We feel we want we can build the next generation of scientists or innovators or researchers, or people who can problem solve. So we cannot just develop our country by just politicking and, and sonogarying. No, we must build a knowledge economy, which is probably powered by science and technology. And so, so to be able to do that, we communicate science. How do we communicate it? Some of us have to sacrifice. If there's some money to earn or to be to, to sponsor some of this work, yes, let it come. We shall welcome it. And then, of course, uh, the other challenge is that many journalists like myself and, and my colleagues in the field are yet to acquire research interpretation skills. They don't know how to interpret research. So probably this should be now a call to journalism uh, departments or schools around the country. I have seen Professor Chivita online to be able to, 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 to try and modify what we are, how we are teaching our journalists to take them into this field so that we help our scientists to communicate their research. And now it, I also, of course, discovered that Every researcher is a scientist. As long as you're using research methods, you become a scientist. So everybody is a scientist now. And so, but our works are not communicated because, because our journalism departments or schools probably are, are, not, are not skilling very well our journalists to communicate science. Or even science colleges or departments have not been able to school to skill our, our researchers to communicate their own research. So it's going to be also important for universities like Mbara University, for med medical schools like Makiri University, or Mulago, whatever you want to call it, to Usitema, you know, Kumi, anywhere, to probably impart some, uh, some news reporting skills on some of our, of, of, of our research, of our students, so that they don't have to wait for Rigendo, who has, this, who has invented this, to, to look for them to communicate. No, they can now begin to be to themselves. Now, funding for science communication, again, is limited. It's a challenge. We need to say that. And then finally, the other challenge is that public, uh, publications such as this one are in English. So we may not reach uh, our poor people who want to read Rinyankore, who want to read research in, in Uganda, who want to read research in Swahili. I've told you of somebody who's already doing it in, 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 in Tanzania. And he's doing a similar, similar work that I'm doing, but he's communicating in Swahili. And, and, and I've seen him going to CNN, BBC, and all these places where they, are, they, they have identified him and, and they want to probably help him see if he can reach so many other people to communicate their research in Swahili. Now, in Uganda, we might need to have research finds news, uh, communicate in Uganda, communicate in, or maybe use Bukede or use others to be able to to reach our poor people to understand what we are doing within our universities. But what can we begin? What can we do in the short term? And now here I want to invite all of you to work with me on this journey. To, to turn yourselves, turn all of you into journalists. Charity has to begin at home. Be your own journalist. I will explain in the next slide how we can become your own journalist. I am arguing that technology has provided us, provided us enough space. Social media, 
I, I am investing, I'm investigating, of course, the digital media. And, and, and so we have social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. These are spaces that you yourselves can uh, build your presence. You can build your presence on these spaces. So you now begin to tell us what you're doing. And once we sit there, I can be able to pick it and, and create a new story out of it. And this is, this is going to be very helpful to all of you. Uh, because I, I was, I am, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm very business minded. So I, I was coming from an entrepreneurial uh, background. And, and so when I reached at Bakir University and started reading about these works, your works, and, and looking at all these journal articles, and, and I'm realizing this is an opportunity that one can exploit. So, and that's how we began such fine news. And, and so, so it is possible that your work, once it's communicated through these technology platforms, uh, industry will pick it. Industry will look for you. Industry would want, for example, now to, I, I'm sure industry will really talk to Dr. Juliet here for what she's doing in, 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 in antibiotics. antibiotics. Uh, resistance, you know, if somebody might come and want to work with you because of the story that I have done. And so, because of what, of how you've communicated your research. So, I'm also arguing that uh, you work with publications such as mine, and, I know, and I'm sure I am going to inspire other publications to follow this route so that we, we change the way we report. Uh, I am talking about, I'm also arguing that science-oriented universities like Mbara University, like uh, now I hear Makere University wants to be, wants to be uh, research-oriented. Motesa One Royal University here, same stories, they want to be research-oriented. So if we want to be science-oriented or research-oriented universities, we must be intentional about news writing basics or science journalism courses. All researchers should have these basics. They should not have only just policy writing or policy brief basics. No, my argument is that we should also teach them some this some simple news writing basics, which I'm going to do in the next slide. You can also share your policy papers with us. We will pick something out of it. This is what I did with the, I think Dr. Nagashita's story of of women. In Chiruhura, in the Kato Korodo, who are trying to, to create cosmetics out of cow ghee, you know? And it's, 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 I said, I asked her, please send me a policy paper. And, and I sat down. It took me just about 30 minutes, and I had a good story out of that. It's on the, it's on the site. You can go there and find it. Uh, you can also share your latest publications. I showed you how to do it. Um, when you go on the site, you, you click you click on share your story or send us a story, something is there. Share, share, share with me so that we work together on this journey. I am sure if you support this publication, it will get funding it will, so that we reach everyone and have all of you actually even participate. For example, that same menu, there is something called conversations. Now, conversations is a, a menu which tag, is, is targeting you, the researchers, if, for example, you don't want to send me your work, but you want to say something in an, in an opinion, in, a, in an expert preaching, let me say it that way, you send us your article, we publish it on conversations, and, and people can find you. So, so we, in the short term, of course, we can look for grant support for and funding for this kind of pro, pro project. Because my, my dream is that uh, eventually, if, uh, if this site is able to engulf all of you, then we can move together and even start the first ever science television in the country. So that then we no longer don't have to have host politicians to discuss about Mabati. We want host scientists to discuss about their research work, their, their, their knowledge, and how it can be translated into policy and practice. So, how are you going to become your own journalist? You people who are listening to me, you comrades who are listening to me. I am here to teach you some journalism, <laughs> some news reporting. Uh, I, I have my professors online, I've seen them. If I uh, make some mistakes, I, they should not uh, blame me. 
but I am trying to pass on what they taught me. Uh, if you see on your right hand side of the screen, there is something called an inverted pyramid. It's what we use in journalism, in reporting. We start with the lead, which has, must have the most important information. It must answer the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how. So if you go into your own journal article or your PhD thesis that you did, or your postdoc that you are doing, who are you talking to in your work? What are you talking about? Where did you research from or where did you conduct your, your study from? When did you do this? Why did you do it and how? When you answer that, you have already started talking to our inverted pyramid and giving us the most important information. And this should, not, should, should, should be in one or two thin paragraphs or 30 words each. Answer this in two paragraphs, the first two paragraphs of 30 words each, that's all. Then you go to the other paragraphs, which we call the body, the, the crucial information. This is where the argument is your argument. What was your argument? What controversy are you generating from your findings? Your evidence, for example, your background, your what, your quotations, some pictures that you could have landed on, some videos that you want to use, you know, some details, some background information about why you are doing that research can come into that body. Then we have the tail, the extra information, the interesting things, you know, uh, your recommendations would be the tail, your, um, your, find, your conclusions would be the tail, any other small thing that you want to do. And we recommend that your story should, be, should not be more than 500 words if it's so, so big. 500, if it's too much, 700. If you do your stories that I have done personally, they are between 300 and 700 words. The rest of the work can be found in the link of the journal article that you have provided that I'm going to be giving you. So when you go back now on the left hand side, let's, let's start, let's explain it away. Start with a strong headline. For example, one of the headlines that I've done, if you go on the website, uh, I think, let me quote your, your story, which says, Juliet, Dr. Juliet here, I did her story just a few days back. And I said, um, Ugandan scientists do, do what? Uh, have, have, have innovated something, something, you know. Can you read for me? Because I, because I can't access it here. Ugandan scientists Yes. Now, when you, I hope they have heard, uh, heard you. If they're not heard you, let me read it. <laughs> So the story I did, when I talk about a strong headline, the strong headline that I did about for Dr. Judith's work was that Ugandan scientists unleash innovative plant, plant remedy to combat ant antibiotic resistance in children. Anybody who reads this website, I mean headline, even if they don't go ahead to read whatever I have written, they have understood what exactly these scientists are doing. They would want the, the, the story provokes them to go into what exactly they are doing about children. I might be having a child eh, who is suffering from the same condition. So I want to know what these sons are doing. So the story is so strong and provocative, yet it is clear, it is concise, it is grabbing the reader's attention. That's what we want to do at Research Finds. We grab the reader's attention to be able to read your boring, boring research product. Because that's what they want to tell us, that researchers do publish boring things. So how do we make sure that we, the people read our boring works? So we, 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 we want a strong headline that is catchy, that will grab the reader, reader's attention, but yet that, that, that must be clear and concise. So, so you write in clear, concise, and in an objective manner. Use simple language, avoid jargon. We are trying to remove jargon from your work, but the, the, the jargon will, will stay in the link because people will go into the link and find it. But in our story, we'll remove the jargon. We'll simplify the jargon. Then use the inverted pyramid structure, which I have mentioned on the right-hand side. Start with the most important information first, and then gradually move towards the less important details about your work. Within between five, 700 words. 
If you can do 300 words, that would be fantastic. Answer the five W's and an H, which I have said already. Your article should answer the questions of who. Who in your article, for example, it is the, your study population. It is your audience that you are targeting. What? It is what you are researching about, your topic, your problem. When? When you conducted this research? When did you conduct it? Where? Where did you conduct it? Of course. Probably in northern Uganda, probably in central region, probably at Makere University. And why did you conduct it? That is your research gap. Why did you conduct it? And then how did you conduct it? That's your methodology. Once you do this in simple language, we have a story and we will tell the world about what we've done. Of course, use quotation marks. If you read again Dr. Judith's story, this is why I'm quoting her directly because I called her and said, explain this for me. What do you mean this? What do you, do you mean? It's more academic. So that's why we want to access the press brief to, to, to be able to pick out the story. But the press release is a notification. So those are some of the methods you use. And that press release, you can even post it on your own social media handle. So the journalists like us can pick it and make sure we communicate. We make sure we bring you many more citations. We make sure we, we link you to, to the industry or to people who might be interested in your research. So, so this slide also explains what I've been saying, what to do before you newsify your research findings. Understand your audience, audience. Identify key messages. Think of storytelling story techniques. Storytelling te techniques, I think I'll go in detail here. Use anecdotes, use case studies, use personal stories to illustrate the impact of your research. Personal stories, if you go back to Dr. Juliet's story, I said antibiotic resistance in children. That is personalization. That is human interest. Anybody who has a child would want to do that story. Because I have hit where it hurts most, most the person. Bring the person in the story. Bring the consumers of your research in the story. That's important. Those are good storytelling techniques. The human face, bring a human face in that story. You know, use vivid language. Bring your findings to life. Bring a human face to your story. Audience, understand your audience. Who are these? Are they policy makers? Are you targeting the media? Are you targeting farmers? Are you targeting the general public? Leverage visuals, for example. Visuals are like charts, like graphs, like pictures. When you check your audio stories, you realize where do I get some of the pictures? I go and look for them to illustrate your story. I go to Google and find out story pictures that may illustrate what your research was talking about. So I use these pictures. If you look at this story on your left hand side, this is a story that I extracted from Dr. Wenga was and Dr. Moses Kisa's study. They studied uh, the problem of the Gwen's rule crisis in Western Uganda, the clash between uh, uh, UPDF and the Mumbere's people in 2016 at the palace, if you remember the palace attack. So everybody was like, this man, he wants to overthrow government and what and what, but these, these two researchers, Dr. Wenga and Dr. Moses Kisa, went down and did an ethnographic research and understood the root causes of that clash. And, and they concluded that it was about the kingdomization of Uganda, the districtization of Uganda, the unending districtization of Uganda. You turn every village into a district. You bring this village and the other one and form a district. You don't know what is within them, what are the dynamics, what are the sociological dynamics within them. And this is what led to these clashes in, 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 in the Gwenzulu region. Why? Because 
the state in trying to, to, to cow down Mumbere decided to, to, to kingdomize some other fiefdoms around the Rwanda's rule. And the Rwanda's rule people were not happy. And that's how they clashed with the, with the security forces. So, but we brought this story out because we know when we talk about the rule, it, everybody wants to know what, what they're talking about. They talk about Mumbere, that's the human interest, the human face into this story. But their work, which is published in the Cambridge Press, was able to reach far and wide. And I'm sure you, you, some of you accessed it. So we leverage visuals. You see the Mumbere picture there. A picture speaks 100 or 1,000 words. And uh, we use photos, try to use videos. Eventually, as we try to improve, when we get more resources, even we want to act out your story. We bring myself, for example, and I read out your story in a video format and we act it out to be able to hear people who can't read but can see a video and can understand, or people who are, don't have time to read but can listen to a video or an audio and understand what your, 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 your research was talking about. So we create engage, engaging headlines and teasers. I have already shown you that. So why do I think that musification is the future of research translation? Of course, I'm still a student. I don't want to claim to know what research translation is all about, no. But I have learned that research translation in, in entails writing problems, uh, disseminating research findings, and uh, that's what I've made. I've, 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 I've been told about. And uh, but for me, I have said no. We can take it a notch further and engage media into what in a process called musification, which I've already explained. And why is why do I think this is the future? Because if you can't communicate your findings to children, to cooks, to maids, to border border cyclists. Then you haven't understood them yourself. This is my argument. Globally, the language is changing. It is gravitating toward the science careers, especially after COVID. So if we are be we begin to believe that science, research, the knowledge economy is the future, then we have to use five. When you come to Africa, also the political language is changing. They are having investments in science and technology careers in increasing evidence-based policy implementation. For example, recently, I saw in Kiruhura, this week, the president was uh, launching something, something to do with, uh, with, uh, with, with science and technological skilling. But their products have to be talked about, have to be, we have to use media to, to newsify those products and make sure that they, they they, they, they get appreciated by everyone who wants to consume them. When it comes to Uganda, President Museveni is obsessed with scientists and he's always speaking about science, science and technology. Of course, we in the humanities are also complaining that he's giving money, more money to scientists and not us in the humanities. Somebody needs to tell him that, uh, that <laughs> when you engage in methodology, you're already scientist. If you engage in engage in methodology to, 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 to establish facts and findings, then you're a scientist. And this is very alive in the humanities as well. So all of us are scientists, so we deserve uh, recognition. But because we're talking about it, that means we are we are beginning to understand that science is the is the future, is the is is, is the is, is the holy grail, is the is the, is the light at the end of a dark tunnel that has engulfed this continent. And therefore, we need musification to be able to engage policymakers to understand us. I had already said earlier on that, 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 that public servants, technocrats in these ministries and government departments have a love-hate relationship with, with researchers, with the academicians, because they think they are theoretical, that they are theorists. It's because they don't understand what they are doing. Or it's because they don't understand these findings. Or it's because nobody has newsified them. If we begin to newsify them, then the policymakers will now begin to consume our research products. And, and for me, what I want, the revolution I, I'm doing right now, is that we no longer want to recognize politicians 
on the front, on the high table, or giving them front, front bench recognition. No, we want our professors, our teachers, our PhD holders to be recognized on the front bench because of what they are doing. It's because they don't know what they are doing that they don't recognize them. If they did through notification, then they would recognize them. They would give them funding. They would partner with them to create products that can be commercialized, that can be patented. And then, and then we all become happy. We employ people and we transform our economies. So, so again, I, I need to argue that musification is the future because there are so many articles that are hidden in journals and they go unnoticed. It's only academicians and students like us who notice them, but we only use them to earn our PhDs and go back home. This is wrong. Now, of course, the search for knowledge is an, is an unending journey. And every new, for me, I argue that every, every new knowledge, every new finding, you people who, who are always greeting us in our defenses, uh, what is your PhD? What is your PhD now? Tell us what exactly have you contributed? So that contribution for me is a new story waiting to be told by a journalist. That to me is the new story waiting to be told by a journalist. So I want to write the media to start knowing about this, that that PhD when uh, in the, during defense, when they, they, they are greeting us and they say, what is your PhD? <laughs> and and, and so, so for me, that is the one, that's the story that should be told in non time, New Vision, in Red Paper, everywhere in, in research finds, in BS, anywhere. Now, of course, there is talk everywhere about research led universities, especially in Africa. For me, I find this, this is an opportunity to find out and publish what they are doing. I've been trying to quietly using. Uh, the Twitter handle for Research Finders, which is the Research Finders News UG. Research Finders UG. I've been trying to contact the, 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 direct, the, the research directorates in the different universities. I go quietly, but they don't know I'm the one contacting them. I said, please give me your thing. They follow back. Sometimes they send, sometimes they don't send. But I, I want to work with them. I want to work with them because I know they have so many uh, products that are, 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 uh, are on their shelves. We want to see what is Mark Riff doing. If 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 Uganda, if Museven, I don't know what in Africa, in uh, government of Uganda has has has, has given thirty billion to Makere University to fund to fund specific targeted uh, uh, NP three oriented research. We want to use five, so that then we know that Mark Riff is relevant. So that then Museven can now increase the money and give give them thirty billion. The same should happen at UCU, should happen at the other universities, Mbara University, at the Uganda Matters, and other places. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm still arguing that musification is the future of research translation because you scientists are preaching to the converted. To demonetize this, this preaching to include everybody. We need for human interest in research. We need. We need to, to, to redefine our audiences. So policy, if policymakers have a love hate relationship with, with academia in Africa, and they call them theorists, we now need to redefine that audience. How do we do that? When we use five products, the audience becomes, uh, their mindset changes. Like these policymakers, their mindset changes. And uh, of course, in, in research, in academia, we emphasize academic rigor, but we need to to add journalistic flair, so the findings are understood by everyone. We need science journalism everywhere. I know some universities are doing it, even including Makerere, but we need more of this, or we need to turn our own researchers into science journalists, just to be able to communicate their own works. Uh -huh. I'm arguing again that uh, there is a need for a nexus between uh, social science and natural science. These days I hear People talking about social medicine, people are talking about social agriculture, people are talking about social engineering. Why? Because humanities and natural sciences are beginning to have a discussion. But the moderator should be the media, should be the journalist. So we also need to look at uh, 
intellectualism versus scientific literature, what comes first? I argue that you, you don't have to be an intellectual to read a scientific product. Uh, then, of course, if the future is musification, we now have potential of social media. Start your own space on social media. Optimize your findings. Use LinkedIn. Use, use Facebook. Don't think social media is just for the world of people, the ones in town, wasting time. No, these, these spaces have potential to create your own media houses. You don't have to wait for such finders to, to be able to, to, to do your works. You don't have to pay a journalist to be able to, 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 to newsify you. You can newsify yourself on your own platform. So why should we newsify research findings again? Yeah, we need to advance knowledge, you know that. We need to make sure people or audiences access our knowledge. We need to create impact. We need to address some pressing issues. For example, if we have, we have a public health issue, you remember there was um, COVID-19. The, 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 the person who stood out during COVID-19, during the fight against COVID-19, was one of us, Professor Guang. And why? Because his COVIDx came out of a research product. And why did people talk about COVIDx? Because the media houses focused on it. That's what, that's what, that's, that's the reason. So, so we must research, we must use viral research findings in order to address pressing community or society issues. Like, for example, what happened in the COVIDx scenario. Um, yeah, because once we unify, then we support scientific endeavors. Once we unify, there is a possibility that science can be funded. Once we unify, we also kill stereotypes and misconceptions about Africa. For example, by highlighting the contributions of African researchers and institutions, news coverage research can help to shift the narrative away from stereotypes and misconceptions about Africa and its capabilities. They think we don't research, of course we do, but of course the figures show that much of the research that is done in Africa, 70% of it is done by outsiders or funded by outsiders. And uh, even much of this research is done in South Africa, in Southern Africa for that matter. So these misconceptions that the, we from Africa cannot also contribute to the North must be stopped. It is, and why they can't be stopped is, is because we don't use fire. So we also must use fine in order to increase the credibility of our, of our researchers, to create great attention to their findings. We must use fine because we need to attract funding so that we, con we contribute to a more sustain sustainable scientific research. We also need to use fine to create collaborations. When your product is, is newsified, there is a, a potential for collaboration especially between policymakers, between federal researchers, and funding agencies. Um, so here, what we do, how, how, how do we think, for example, we, at research findings, for example, we plan to, to bring in a commercialization element in order to be able to find time and pay people to newsify these products. I told you it's very difficult. But we have a unique selling point. Why? Because we newsify research, it's the first of its kind on this continent. I am very proud that uh, I'm the only one who has thought about this and other people will be inspired. We also newsify research reports, books and articles, so it's a good selling point. We focus on science uh, communication on all topics, and we emphasize quality writing and news presentation. When we do this, we think that people can pay for this. You people, if you have your research product and you want it news, because whenever you go to disseminate it at a seminar, you, you, you hire a venue, you you know you pay this, you pay that, you pay that, but you can also pay some little money to us, maybe fifty thousand, maybe ten thousand shillings, maybe hundred thousand. Be able to newsify your product and take it very, very far. 
but we haven't reached that stage. We are still not, not for profit because we feel that the work we are doing is noble and can attract your funders to also support it. On, 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 the, on the right hand side on the screen, that's an example of a story. I think this, this story is from Dr. Nagasha, where we are saying that there is a new study which is showing how to turn Uganda's milk into cosmetics. Anybody who loves milk <laughs> would want to read that spirit, no? Oh my God, how, do, how, do, how does it happen? Yeah, but that's what we picked from her policy uh, brief. Uh, we also, now, why we think we have a, a good commercialization potential is because our of our target audiences, audience. We target academicians, our audience includes policy makers, our audience includes the general pub public with an interest in research. We, our audience includes researchers, educators, students, journalists, scientists, and individuals who are interested in staying informed about the latest research findings and the implications for academia, policy, and society at large. This is what we are doing, a unique target audience, which you people can also target, or which funders can target, or which sponsors can target. So this is some of the works we've done on the right hand side. You will read and see. Uh, it is a scientist who developed the model to prevent prenatal death in pregnant mothers. I think this scientist is at Guru University. This researcher is at Guru University. Um, you can see all these stories yourselves. Um, uh -huh. I'm here, I, pre I, pre I did a story about how narrow scientists I have developed uh, antique vaccines, which, which are going to save Uganda 300 billion shillings in drug imports. Uh, yeah, you see, and then of course, our monetization strategy is that we, we will concentrate on trying to attract, to attract some advertising. I'm trying to, for example, I have, a, I have a section called events. Those of you who have events, you can give them to us. We will make no but I employ more journalists to reach out, to reach out to all the universities. We want to attract sponsorships, want to attract the musification fees, I've already mentioned it. Donations, if they are there, or subscriptions. Um, yeah, we intend to do that as well. Outreaches, we want to do social media. Uh, advertising for all your, which we do mostly, whenever we publish a story, we advertise the stories on social media. Uh, we do tactical web promotion to target different audiences and other skills that we can help with you. If you can't know how to write your press release, we, well, we have this service. If you can't know how to write out uh, your press we can help you. Uh, or maybe turn your research product into a press release, we can help you. Uh, this is uh, an interview I did with Dr. Wengabo because he did some work on how to tackle future pandemics in Uganda. Some time back, and his work actually predicted what happened during that pandemic. And so I interviewed him because he developed a model and I interviewed him and that's where he is. Um, yeah, we want to build relationships with our advertisers, with potential sponsors, and uh, we also have a way of measuring our success. And this is what we do. These are stories that we've been doing. You can see we did a story out of Kazire. If those of you know Kazire Factory in Mbarara, they did something about some about fit peptic ulcers, but much of a research product. Um, that reveals where you see Dr. Diana injecting President Museveni. Uh, I, I did the story, I think, when I was, they did story, they, they did, they, 12 years back, they did, they did, they did um, some, some, some study that predicted COVID-19 outbreak. Out and, uh, and it was so interesting. So I did it, and, and it really reached so many miles. I thank you very much, and uh, for your, for, for me and for any apologies, I have for any mishaps here and there. This is what I could do, and uh, and thank you for giving me attention. And uh, now we entertain any questions or advice and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and.
some value addition to what I'm doing. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Rugendo. This has been massive. Um, personally, I've learned a lot, and uh, I hope it will be very useful for everybody who has uh, listened to you. And uh, we hope uh, going forward, uh, your, inve your innovation will help other researchers and universities to publish their uh, findings. Uh, uh, Mr. Rugendo has uh, asked us to give him some comments or questions, so the floor is open. Yeah, uh, Monica, you have the floor. Yes, good morning, everyone. And I'm really happy to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rugendo, uh, very, very much for your uh, presentation and also for the initiative. I just wanted to draw our attention to an organization called SciDev.net. SciDev short, Sci short for science, SCI. DEV.NET. That is involved in fairly similar work, except I think their parent is in the UK, but they have chapters in various parts of Africa and so on. And since I also attended the seminar on networking, if, if Rugendo and his team have not already networked with them, the contact person in Uganda is called Charles Wendo, and he's in charge of their training and other things. It might be a good idea to link up with them if you haven't already, I, I suspect you have. Um, so I just wanted to draw your attention to this. They also run a website, a fairly big website called The Conversation, where they share a newsified research. So it might be a good idea to sort of harness the synergies here. There is space for many innovations. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, thanks. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very Thank you. much. Do the who is going to ask a question? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. My name is Florent. My name is Florence. Thank you, Rugendo, for the nice presentation. My question actually relates to the conversation about research. I wanted to find out when Rugendo um, writes <laughs> about research, do people react, do they comment? Because uh, we believe that we should uh, uh, bring out work, but we should also make it better in another version. So when you musify your research and then people react, somehow you might find out something, either you or uh, you didn't, you overlooked, or something that you did wrong, and then you can have a better version or another, uh, an, another story. You might identify another gap within your research and then advance further. So I wanted to know if uh, he normally like gets, uh, when he knows files, some of the research that I've seen, does he normally get feedback? Or do those people who have, whose research has been used, have they gotten feedback that is impressive enough to make them advance more? That's my question. Yeah, Mr. Rugendo, there is also Saron in the chat uh, who is asking, how do we let other researchers out there know of this opportunity? Okay. Srivia. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rugendo, for this nice presentation. I actually wanted to react about a story he did about my research. Um, I remember sharing the actual publication with my colleagues and family, and they told me uh, there's a lot of science in the in the paper. But later, when Mr. Rugendo did the news, 
it was so easy for them to understand. So, and to me, when I read his, his new CFID research, of course I understood everything and I didn't see the difference between my paper and his, but yes, other people commented very well. And they said, if I had written like him, maybe they would have understood better. So I still think that he does probably a better work than the rest of us. And maybe the other thing that should be left in the newsified uh, version of the research, maybe the place for comments to accommodate as many comments as possible. Thank you. Yeah, uh, um, thank you. First answer is, should I first answer this? Uh, let's have Dr. Kakura and then you answer. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Rujindo, for the wonderful presentation. Though I came in a little bit late, my apologies. I wanted to find out, um, uh, one, uh, what challenges have you encountered in inspiring uh, research and then number two have you tried to engage universities in trying to newsify research and uh, what has been if so uh, what has been the reception thank you yeah thank you robert uh mr jeffries uh, you could go ahead thank you Maybe let me start with this last one, Dr. Kakuru. Yes, the challenges, maybe you came in when I had actually mentioned them, but I can repeat still here. The biggest challenge actually uh, is, um, because I, I am not an alpha and omega about these things. So interpreting some of your research is such a, a tough thing, especially when it comes to the natural sciences because I don't have enough personnel with me who understand these things. So it's a very big challenge, and but it's a work in progress where um, I intend to motivate many journalists to join me on this journey to be able to uh, lessen the burden that I am carrying because I almost do it alone, almost. And so I'm then going to in interpret, you know, you know how to read these journals, there's so many, but you also have your own PhD to do. But something that I'm so passionate about, I feel it has a place in this country and it will work. And I'm glad Professor Chibita has given me a link where I'm like, I, I build collaborations with the colleagues at science at sciencedev.net so that we are able to cast the net wider and then have more people to get involved. So that's, that's the biggest challenge. I would interpret, especially some of the works that are very, very difficult. So, so, they, so most of them don't get into, into this channel. Then of course, funding, uh, how do you reach out to all these researchers? It is difficult, especially when you are running it on your own. Websites don't earn money. So I don't have funding. And so I believe if I had funding, then I would place people in the different universities whose job would be to do it on a daily basis or, or work with the journalism schools to, to take this up, especially journalists or, or journalism students that are interested in science reporting or science journalism. So that's very, very important. And so that's a challenge because you need to pay them. And uh, if you don't have money to pay them, so you have, I have to keep doing it on my own. Have I engaged universities? Yes, I have. I have actually, those of you at your universities, you must have seen, if you've noticed your, 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 your handles, your Twitter handles, my, my handle is follows you. It is, my handle is research finds UG. It follows you and sometimes I have gone into your inboxes and I've seen them follow back. And when I ask sometimes, when I ask, send me some of your products, I must say they have not actually, they have not sent them maybe, they are yet to trust the publication. I understand them from that angle. They are yet to trust this publication. 
and slowly they will do. But what I do is I am doing it in a guerrilla way. So when I visit uh, Google Scholar or, or Chicago or anyone, and I land on an interesting journal article and I find it is by a researcher at say UCU, then you find me actually uh, also giving recognition to, to, to Uganda Christian University. That's how I tend to do it. And by the time they wake up, they realize that this population has been actually around. But the one that has been very kind of responsive, this is the one at UCU, the, the, the directory. They usually come to my inbox and they, they chat a bit, but not so much. I, I'm, I'm so impressed by them, but the rest haven't. There's a bit of reaction from Bara University. Makere, they are still quiet. Hopefully something will happen. But if you're talking of, I can see in the chat, Dr. Kakuru, you're talking of the political volunteers. That's why I'm here. Because all of you are writers, are potential writers. Why was I giving you basic writing skills? It's as simple as that. So share, share. My job is to sit down in my computer to refine and, and bring in the journalistic player. That is all. And so, um, personnel, of course, he talked about that. And I think I finished that. Uh, Sylvia was talking about comments, and somebody else also talked about whether I have, I think, Florence. Yes, if you look at the story, you can open it. When you go down, there's space for comments. Some of the stories have attracted comments, others probably haven't, but there's, there's space for, for people to comment. When we comment, we moderate these comments and even publish them. Some of the stories actually have some published comments, especially, I think, that one of Renzo has some published comments. The one of Nkumba Investor has some published comments. The one of Dr. Nagasha has some published comments. I think he was, uh, Dr. Jiri is not yet, but I'll check. There are some comments that are beginning to come out. This is, this is, this is still some kind of pilot project. It's still a young, a young website. It's not yet even a year old. So interestingly, it is, a, it is now catching fire. I am very impressed in fact, because when I look at the, at the, the accounts, the, the, the Twitter accounts that are following this account, they are very serious accounts actually. And they are all emerging from the funding world, from the universities, from the research uh, agencies, or from the researchers themselves. These are the type, the, the quality of people that are following our account, our, our, our Twitter account. That tells me where the site is going. And, uh, and once I, I, go, I build these collaborations, I think we'll have many, many people to come come on board and, and support. How do we let other researchers know about this? Yes. Oh, when I was given this opportunity, I came running to let you know. I had been actually doing it on Nimura forum, but people had not taken it seriously. Sometimes people want to first see the works so that then they know that actually something is serious. And so this is one of the ways I reach out. I always make noise on social media. I am a panelist on the, Friday, on, the, on the media round table, NBS television every Friday. Whenever I'm there, I ask the moderator to speak about my research findings project, findings project. But also we believe that the stories, once they are out there, if your story has been usified properly, then we, through referral, we more such, as, more such as come on board. Because now the ones that are coming on board now are people who have been referred to me. Somebody comes to my inbox and said, how can I, how can you help me? How can I have my article here? Can you do something? Yes, so-and-so told me, so-and-so told me, so-and-so told me. But uh, once the universities come on board properly, because I, I want to engage, because I mean, these are the people who originate this, this research. So once the universities come on board, they will, they, I believe they will spread the message. If they, they don't spread the message, the, the works that we shall do for them will spread the message itself. So it is a work in progress. I don't want to say I am at the level of new vision, no, but it's a work in progress and I'm sure people will, will get to know about this and, uh, and engage. And we have made it very easy. When you go to the website, I tried to log on, but I think the internet didn't, I don't know. I wanted to show you on the website. So if, if I can share the site, then I show you what we are doing. Let's log on uh, for me. I want to share the, the research friends website. I want to share for you the site to see how you engage the research friends on it. Maybe we had huh? the site, the director going live online. Okay. 
Just a second. Let me just show you an example of this side and what we are doing. So this is, I think it's a share. Maybe it comes and go into share. Uh -huh. Now I can share. Share screen. Okay. You put double S in the research. Yeah, I, I am sorry. Okay, so this is where we are. Okay, so when you come here, uh, you will see uh, these are the different areas that we so far have talked about. Um, but we every area that is such researched on falls under this. this any of these categories, and if it's not here, we'll add it. So this is where the stories are. Maybe take you through briefly. You see, you see this story. This is this is uh, Dr. Juliet's story. This is the story from Mkumba University, the one who talked about the protests. This is from Mbara University, where they are doing research uh, in herbal plants. But I picked something that would make it catchy. I found that they are, they, one of their works is that they're searching into impotence. They're trying to do to work to, to develop some herbal solution to, to sort of erectile dysfunction in men. So I wanted this. It, it really caught, caught my attention. And I said, if I put it here, then it will take them to where the, the whole point is. But let me first go in and I show you how it looks like, how we justify it, and how we talk about these researchers. Maybe I could go, I could go, let me use this. Let me use yours, or oh, very own here. Now, this is, this is a Juliet story. And I said, uh, my intro was a team of brilliant scientists from Chambog University led by Dr. Juliet J. Simra. He's pioneering a groundbreaking approach to tackle antibiotic resistance in children using the power of plants. Now, if we go down, how this is how the story is moving. I talk about Chambogu University, so people know where the research is originating. I also talk, talk about this author herself, what she does and her research interests. And then there's somewhere where I mentioned about where there's the, the link is. I think uh, Julia didn't give me her link, or oh, I forgot to put it. I think, but uh, I can do when, one which has a link. Now, if I go to Mbara University, so Nagasha, I do for Nagasha. Okay, but uh, now for Mbara University, so this, this is their para, para, parabiotic project that they are doing. And uh, I picked the story from the MPs. In fact, I picked this story from their Peter handle. And then I went and looked for the work that they do. I even backgrounded it in some other research that was done by, by some other professor, which is, which is this one here. Some research was done in 20, 2005 in Western Uganda, read by Kamatenes Mujisha or Yemo Riga, and published in, uh, in African Science Sciences Journal in 2005. But why I was interested in that research was what they found out. They, they did 33 herbal plants and they, they identified them. And some of the herbal plants are the ones that Mbara University is now researching about. And some of the herbal plants are here planted at Mbara University. I talk about the study area there. But importantly, uh, I, I credited where, the whole, where I picked these pictures from Mbara University Science of Technology. And also in this previous research, I mentioned where it can be found is here. If finally, let's do uh, Nagasha's. 
ways in Nagashan. Okay, um, let me just go here. Maybe number two. Some research at Makere recently did a study on how music is a political tool. And he was quoting Bobby Wine's music. Um, there are some researchers recently who did a study at Mulago and found out how much waste is being churned out out of Mulago. It is here. Those researchers, I gave them recognition. Uh, I think let me search Dr. Nagasha from here. Okay. This is Nagasha's story. Her works came from this building women's capacity on a milk value addition to increase their incomes. This is her title and uh, what she's been doing with those women, her recommendations, and uh, the, the gender issues involved, the methodology. We try to simplify it. I also talked about the Kato Korodo where and where it is and what is happening. And then who is she? This is, where, this is who she is. This is a picture. And stay informed. I say, visit our website, come to the search finds UG and contact us on this page. And I think because it was a policy uh, brief, we didn't have a link. That's why I didn't put a link. But now, interviews, this is where I'll be interviewing all of you in case you know, I have not done one, I'll wait to do one. Conversations is where I now attract your own expert views, which you write from your own perspective. So one of them is here, Dr. Um, Apollo, he's also a member of NIMRA, Dr. Apollo Regea. And uh, he recently, he was talking about how they are, them as Ugandan scientists are uniting to birth the next generation of engineers and innovators. Very interesting take. And he even got a comment. The comment is here. Somebody, Paul Taka says, Dr. Apro, this is a good initiative by, I think this is the association of, of their engineers. Uh, um, there are many other. So when you come here, send us a story. When you come send us a story, you'll find a form. And these are the questions. What motivated your study or innovation? Tell me. Number two, what's your study or innovation objectives? You know the objectives. Which social problem is your innovation or study addressing? I'm talking about a social problem because I'm communicating to the society because we believe, we believe that the society which, is, which, which, should do, which should consume your research. So that means then it is, it is, it is, it, it, the social element is important for your study. Then you can uh, describe for me your target audience, beneficiaries or users of your study, your major contribution. Once you've done that, you keep going and feeling in and feeling in for me. And then ultimately, uh, your brief findings, list, list them, and then share a link to your journal paper. You share it here, put your name, your phone number, your email address, and you submit. When you submit, this one comes to our, to our email portal, which is from which that we get these stories. And then maybe uh, share afterwards, we share here on Twitter, for example, if I can come back to these stories, once I have done a story, for example, let me go back to Juliet here. She also has one comment, by the way, I can see. So we come here and share on Facebook, we share on Twitter, we share it on, uh, on LinkedIn when we come here and all the other channels, including emails. Let me see what, is, what, what comment did you have? Ah, somebody commented here. Wow, Juliet and team, you are really taking us are really taking us great heights in the footsteps of Dr. Wang, Jenna Habos. I see an emerging revolution in health sciences research in Uganda. Somebody commented there on, on his, I think Dr. Tash. And others, if I, if I go to my email, I'll find them there waiting for me to moderate them. And that will be it. <laughs> this is where we are. Let me see, since the, uh, UCU has been the one responding a bit. Let me see their stories. UCU. I 
think there's one story from UCU. Yes, this is Dr. I think she's a member of our team here. Um, Dr. Professor, yes, Professor Kunda. Uh, this is her, her work, which we did and even sent it outside on social media. And here, I talked about what she has done. Her papers, people can go and find them. And, and then, uh, and then we were talking about her event, which was going to, I think, disseminate these findings. And I, I put a Zoom link. Then I went to her, to her inbox. I'm, I want, I want to mutabarza. I, I went to her inbox. I said, send me your, your findings. So that I, I add on this story. She never responded. Maybe I don't know why. But uh, this is what we did for her. Okay, she will be able to. She will be able to tell me. I wanted her findings so that we communicate further. Why? Because her 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 work is very important in the COVID nineteen fight. Very very important. And so I felt that I could do an additional story for her. I think that is all for regarding the the the. The, the questions. Uh, yeah, uh, this story, which is the most important, let me, let me find it. This story from Kumba, it has shocked me, in fact, because it is the most read. It has over how many people views? 186, you can imagine, because I think it's touching everyone's concern demonstrations, security, shootings, bullets, everything. And so, uh, but what I did was again, I did, I asked who she is, and uh, I was able to also attach a link to the story, to, to her work somewhere. This is here, this is the one here. Yeah, that is all. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Rujendo. There is a question from Sarah Mbabazi. Do you have yes. topics that you wish to be researched on and unified? Oh, yes. It's on the chat. Okay, uh, I answer that. Maybe let's uh, first yeah. hear from Dr. Gad and then you, you combine. I think so. Dr. Gad? Dr. Gad, you are muted. Maybe Thank you very much, answer. moderator, for giving me this opportunity to. Uh, I am speaking. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible. Uh, I I am grateful, moderator, for giving me this opportunity to comment on the very highly enlightening presentation by Comrade Ruge. Uh, we seem to have lost the guard. Maybe we'll come back as you answer, Sarah. Mm, maybe I mean, answering the first question in the meantime. Yes. Yes. This is very it's an interesting question because uh, I had not thought it that way. But also, I think it's very helpful because I just simply, like you dive into the lake, just throw in a net without knowing what you are supposed to catch. It's only until when I land on something interesting that I take it seriously, then I unify that. But if it has now come from the topics that I feel we need to look at now, there are many issues. I think it begins from what are the issues, the problems that are affecting us as a country, where research needs to be done, and then published. I think this is where we begin from. For instance, uh, let me, if from the humanities side of it, people are not able to explain why PDM is having problems. The price development model, why is it having problems and why, what is causing people to steal the money and why is, why is it having problems of monitoring and evaluation? And, and, and there were issues like they, they had, there was no groundwork that was done. There was, there was no 
no basic baseline survey that was done before they could think about the, the model that they are using. It has it has very serious challenges. Uh, anything around corruption, very serious challenges. Groundbreaking uh, works in the medical field. We have our scientists that are doing a lot of work in the medical field and doing some groundbreaking discoveries or solutions or models that we can work on to solve certain diseases. For example, we have some work on cancer. We have some work going on in cancer, for example, some work going on um, in reproduct reproductive health, uh, uh, some work in the infectious, in, in, in infectious diseases, for example. Then when we come to now to the humanities side, uh, the issues that are affecting our people, corruption, uh, political patronage, there is this quite a lot there. Uh, gender issues, uh, agriculture. There's a lot in agriculture, a lot, a lot. Where people are looking for solutions to pests, solutions to you know food security. Um, uh, now, when we go to, to, to engineering, for example, uh, we we have new technologies that can solve problems. For example. How can we solve this, our portfolio issues, for example? Because they, these topics have both a technological element as well as a social element, what we call in journalism the social shaping of technology theory. So, so you have you know social element within a technological deterministic environment. And 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 and, 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 and this is where the people now come in and, and, and are able to no. If you talk about even HIV AIDS, condom use, all this, and uh, it's quite a lot. In other words, I think, which, which, which are the issues that people are talking about? Which issues are people talking about and discussing? The ones that concern them, the things that are worrying Omuntu Aburijo or the people of Uganda. What are, those, what are those issues that are worrying them? And then, then we can research them. Then, of course, I'm trying to get interested in the the macro topics because they align to the national development goals as well as the SDGs. So those are also very, very important. In fact, if there are any macro people here who have done their projects, send them to me. There's no problem. If you have done them, send them to me. We, we will notify them. Thank you very much. I don't know whether I can now be audible. Yes, you are back. We had lost you. You can I'm proceed, sorry for God. the I'm sorry for the interruption. This is uh, sometimes these things can happen. I want to be very brief because of being uh, aware of what is happening. I would like to really thank Comrade Rujendo for having come out to add on a brick to the growth of Nimura. And uh, there are many uh, lessons picked. My proposal is that you should see a way of working closely with him and the organizations and the uh, aspirations he represents to further grow the impact of science, te te technology, and, uh, and research in the country. I thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Gary. Uh, I, I see um, the one who has been reported from UCU has written on the chat, and she says she will do better. Uh, this has been a very wonderful and eye-opening presentation. Thanks a lot. So, uh, I, I, Mr. Rujendo, uh, uh, Dr. Kunda will give you the information you are asking for. Yes. And uh, not uh, only Dr. Kunda, I, I want to propose that uh, at least all of you have attended this session. I know you have some products, some research products. Just visit that site. You go to send us a story. That is all. And uh, if I do, because I see we have about 25 people here, minus myself and maybe one or two. If 20 products came through, those are 20 stories. Oh, we will be good to go. I know you have some work you have done, which you want, which you want the world to know, or at least. Uh, in the media industry, no, and we take you further. We will, we will use fire you. I, I, I wanted, 
I wanted to put in a disclaimer that I had wanted to speak before uh, Mr. Rugendo started praising Bara University. But uh, then he, uh, I, I was given a chance after he praised Mbara University. But really, uh, if, if others can do it, then everyone else can do it. So I think we should embrace Dr. Rugendo's uh, idea as a scientist beyond borders. Thank you. I hear you have river buds behind you. <laughs> Hopefully you are a farmer there. Uh, do we have any other yeah, the weaver buds wants I am, I am in the car? I want to say something small, uh, Mr. Katunji. Uh, uh, go ahead, Judith. Home. Uh, so I am also trying to... Can I go? Yeah, L let's listen to Judith. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the other name that Rujin was using in his presentation was Nagasha, and this is the Nagasha. So I also would like uh, Nimra to also work together with uh, Mr. Rujendo, because recently we had a platform with uh, Swedish different universities from Sweden and also Africa, about five of them. And we gave Rujendo, it was hosted by Shambhu University, because it was about translating science into policy and practice. And we had different presenters all over the globe, but surprisingly, I think her region was ranked highly. So I think if, if the suite, if the, uh, the world outside there can see what is, he's doing, I think we can wow. work together. Thank you very much. Thank you for that information. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't see any other hand up. Um, let me see what is on the chat. Uh, they are thanking uh, Rugendo. Uh, so probably we could go to the next item on the agenda and uh, give a, a vote of thanks. Uh, let me see. Uh, we could have um, um, since uh, the number of ladies who have talked, I would wish to to have uh, a gentleman uh, give a vote of thanks. Um, let me see, there are, there are very few men here. Um, I see Patrick Oku. Patrick Oku, are you able to give a vote of thanks? If not, I will pick on Samuel Mugavi. Uh, it appears uh, there is a challenge with the uh, two I have picked on. Probably I would ask uh, Dr. Kakuru to give a vote of thanks. Um, thank you, uh, moderator. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, my brother, the comrade Argendo, for taking time to invest in an area that uh, very few have chosen to invest in. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, the time that you take uh, to newsify research. Thank you for taking time to present to us. But like, as I had earlier said, I conveyed my apologies. I joined a little bit late. I was trying to fight with a certain uh, standard report that, uh, and I, it skipped my mind, but then later I recalled and I joined. But uh, I really want to thank you from the bottom of, of my heart. I want to thank everyone that has spared time to attend and listen, uh, listen in. Thank you very much. Um, going forward, I believe that uh, the future is bright. Um, let's share our research. Uh, uh, 
shows with him so that uh, he can uh, really take it up. And of course, uh, the challenges will uh, the challenges will always be there. But I believe that uh, well, with our support, uh, Regendo and, and the team can overcome uh, these challenges. I really want to thank you and uh, wish you a happy Easter. I uh, know, sorry, a happy Eid. Thank you very much. So I'm still in the East and uh, but uh, for, 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 for our brothers and sisters, the Muslims, I wish them a happy Eid. Thank you very much, and Rujendo, keep it up. Blessings. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kakuru. Uh, we have closing remarks and a vital communication. Uh, probably uh, Juliet, Dr. Juliet could uh, lead us into this. Juliet, are you on? Juliet, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. 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 Um. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, although there is uh, some background uh, echo. How is it now? It is now OK. Uh, are you, how about now? Now you, you we can hear you properly. OK, OK. Now, so let me repeat again. I was talking to myself. I'm saying uh, I want I want to appreciate you all who have taken time off to participate in today's seminar. Uh, thank you so much. And I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate our facilitator today, Mr. Regendo. And I was saying that I met him in a, a workshop earlier last month, uh, the one that uh, Dr. Nagasha was talking about. And when I told him about a presentation on research translation, he was very happy to come and offer his service. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Regendo. And we cannot take you for granted. And most important, I also want to appreciate uh, Mr. Kafuncho uh, for the great service. Thank you for being our moderator today, for accepting to give this service. Uh, I just want to bring a few uh, important communications to you. Please be a little bit patient. Maybe in three minutes I will be done. Um, allow me to also recognize and appreciate the board of NIMRA, the board of directors for NIMRA. I can see uh, Professor Kunda Bachayo for taking your time to participate in the monthly seminars. Dr. Robert Kakuru, then I can see Dr. Royce. Then we are seeing Madame Jacqueline. Thank you for always supporting us and for being there. Uh, one thing about NIMRA for the new members is that we do all this on a voluntary basis. So we appreciate when you come in to give a service. Um, I want to um, say next month, we have a very exciting and more exciting seminar which will take us from 15th, 17th May. Please mark your calendars. We will have this year at uh, Nimra head office at Mutesa Royal University. This seminar will be facilitated by uh, Dr. Peter Samuels from Birmingham University. Those of you during COVID time, you remember he gave us um, a workshop for a whole week through a series of learning. And then later last year, 
I think he took us also through some seminars online. But this time he will be here physically. He's paying his own ticket and everything to come and yeah, give us these skills. Interestingly, he will be sharing about um, um, supervisionary relationships, uh, stress management, data collection and preparation, while analysis and quantitative analysis, and how to do statistical testing. And even then, those who have reached already at the point of VIVA, how to prepare for VIVA and defend your thesis. So it will be a very enriching seminar. And, and uh, please don't miss out. Uh, we'll be sending to you um, the flyers over that. Spread the word. Like the way you get to know, you go to know about Nimura, tell a friend about it. I don't think in your institutions, those of you are still on the PhD journey or about start, I don't think that you are the only ones. Please tell people about Nimura and how they can join and also let them not miss about it. is about the, we have many people have joined Nimura, the new members will be and uh, the orientation for the new members will be on 6th May this year at 10 a.m. It will be online. So for the, uh, Mr. Vincent Search Terraco will be reaching out to you and he will be sharing the link. So we want to tell you more how you can utilize the opportunities uh, at NIMRA. Lastly, but not uh, is to thank and appreciate the executive members whom I work with. Uh, so um, one I was seeing online was Dr. Gad Rusaza, but we also have um, other committed executive members like Madame Olive Chogadiwe, Hadija Yahaya and others. Lastly, allow me to apologize for the, our Muslim colleagues. This landed on uh, the, their special day, the Eid day. But I also take this opportunity to congratulate them upon ending the month of Ramadan and wish them a happy Eid. Uh, we had brought this area thinking that it would be on Saturday. Initially, that's what we were told. And we wanted to create more time to pre-organize for now this seminar that is we are preparing for with uh, uh, Dr. Peter Samuel. So we'll be here physically, those of you have never known where the Tessa Royal is, not know this is where we were given an, an opportunity and a, a space. And so we encourage you come here and we interact, we network. And through this, we'll be able to, all of us be able to fulfill our dreams. And lastly, this is a call to all of us. Uh, like I've said, Nimra, we are doing a service, voluntary service. Um, I want to apologize, first of all, for some of the members who shared their research articles. We were meant to share them online on our website, on our Nimra website. Um, but we've been having a few issues. So I want to call upon anyone, any persons who can be in a position to help us keep on uh, updating some of these things on our website. Uh, please kindly inbox me. Um, we want to make our website be more active and uh, interactive, but we've been having challenges with uh, the previous persons. So if you feel this is something that you can also contribute, all of us towards Nimra, all of us, we are just doing a service, please kindly uh, offer yourself and give this support. I thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for attending. I thank you all, and more so to the founders of Nimra. Thank you for having this brilliant idea that is causing impact. Yeah, God bless you. Have uh, Enjoy your holiday. Over to Thank you, our you. moderator. Thank you, Dr. Juliet. We have exactly used the two hours because we've concluded at 11.12. We started at 9.12. Uh, I also wish you uh, a happy weekend and a holiday. Uh, God bless you.
Bless you too.